Bonneville, I guess, was looking for a shortcut over the mountain. John Enos was pretty familiar with all this area, all this territory, you know, and so he knew a lot of trails. So uh, there are stories about him taking Bonneville around through the reservation and trying to find some trails. That's what I kind of understand he was looking for a shortcut to go over the Green Rivers in wagon. See, and the Indians, I mean, you, they're again the sheep eaters. They only went, they only had foot. They never had horses. So when they talk about these trails going back and forth, you know, you can walk back and forth, but you can't go on wagon. Well, they uh, made a, a Travis on his, um, the dog, you know, that they, when they moved to camps and when they done anything, well, they, they, they used him as a, um, a Travis where they had to put sticks on, on each side, you know, and loaded whatever they can on their dogs. They had their dogs, big dogs, packed their dogs. Half wolf about, yeah, about. Uh, it, it isn't, the dog wasn't unique to the sheep eaters. Right now I'm cinching up the belly band, trying to get it adjusted so that hopefully we can make the old pack stay put on him. Oh, I probably got 30 pounds, maybe a little more. Although I did try to lighten it up so the duster wouldn't feel too put out. Come on, duster. Come on. Oh, he's going to blow up and buck. <laughs> I guess he's kind of like training the horse to back saddle, huh? Yeah. Come on. There he goes. Yeah, he's getting the hang of it. Now he's he just needs to get used to it a little bit. Come on, just. The sheep eaters migrated from one elevation to the other, depending on the weather and the time of the year. And so in these little pouches, these little panniers, they would have packed their most essential items. They would have had their arrow shaft straightener, uh, a, a very essential item there. Uh, it's used for several things. Uh, one of the holes here would have been uh, to size the arrow. The other thing that they would have done, they would have used it like a wrench to help straighten the arrow. These two right here are, are small drills. They're, their main function is for, for drilling holes, uh, such as, for example, uh, in, this, in this little old uh, harpoon blade, you would have used a stone tool in, in a manner such as that there to, to drill the hole in it so that they could fasten their cord to the spear. Now here we have a horn, a sheep horn spoon, ladle, uh, dipper, would have been used for a variety of things, uh, water, drinking water, uh, dishing up food, uh, had, had a variety of uses. We have two different kinds of glue. We have the hide glue, which is right here, the translucent. And then we have the, the pine pitch and charcoal, of which they would have softened and, and used in conjunction with fitting a, a knife blade into a sheep horn handle here. It makes a very durable and long lasting glue. Uh, to which they would have fastened the, the blade to the, to the handle. And here we have a little pouch uh, that they would have carried their arrowheads in. We have a handful of arrowheads here. And these right here are the tools. I, I am most certain that they would have taken with them because they are essential to their everyday life. The sinew is used for, for backing the horn bow and it's also twisted into bow strings and probably was also uh, either twisted and or braided into uh, little short uh, cord-like deals for fastening the little harpoon spear to the spear. It was used for sewing up the garments, also for wrapping the uh, arrowheads to the arrow shaft. It just has a, a, uh, a multitude of, of uses and uh, in, is of extreme importance to the, uh, to the, to the mountain Shoshone.